This is the last video for our politics unit. Last lesson here, we're going to focus on the Electoral College. So we're going to close out Unit 4, and there's only one more unit left. Unit 5 will be, or Unit 5 or technically Unit 6, dedicated to economics. That will be fun. Today, Electoral College, let's set the timer, tell you all about the Electoral College. Some people really hate the Electoral College. I'm not one of those people. I understand Electoral College and... I think our founding fathers were right in creating it. What is the Electoral College? The Electoral College, it's not a real college. It's not a college like you think of as a college. So maybe we should come up with another name, but whatever, we're stuck with it. It is the system that we use to elect the president. Let's go over it. So we use some examples from history. I'm going to talk about the system we don't use first. So what you see on the screen is called the popular vote. And it's basically just the total votes. Whoever gets the most votes. This is not the system that we use to elect our presidents. We use a popular vote to elect everybody else and everything else, but when we elect the president, we ignore the popular vote. So what is the popular vote? So I'll give you an example. That's basically, we just count every single vote from every single state and we see whoever has the most and that person wins the popular vote. But again, that means nothing. If you win the popular vote, you win nothing. It's just something that we look at and count. There is no constitutional basis for this. Popular vote means nothing. What is it? All right, so if we look at the 2000 election and we count every single vote in the United States, Al Gore, the Democratic president, got 50,999,897 votes. That was 48.4% of the votes. George Bush got 50,456,002 votes. That was 47.9% of the votes. Basic math will tell you that 48.4% is more than 47.9%. Al Gore received more votes. That's a bigger number. He won the popular vote, but he did not become president because the popular vote is meaningless. The Electoral College elects the president. The Constitution explains that the Electoral College will elect our president, not the popular vote. People who hate the Electoral College, they want this system. They want just whoever gets the most votes wins. It's not that uh, it's not that complicated. This guy gets more votes, he should win. Well, actually, it is a little bit more complicated. You're being naive. You are overlooking plenty of details. Sure, there is some merit. There is a reason why you could support this system. Seems pretty simple, but there are problems with this system. Just like there's problems with the Electoral College, just like there's reasons why people want to get rid of the Electoral College, simply switching over to a popular vote is not going to solve all of your problems. There are problems with a popular vote as well. So we don't use this, and I'll explain later in the video why we do not want a popular vote. This is the Electoral College map. You are looking at all the states in the United States, and you're seeing the different point totals that each state receives. Wow. Some of you might think, oh, this is kind of interesting. What's going on here? And you might be able to guess. What would you think? Why does California get 55 points? Why does Texas get 38 points? Why does Wyoming only get three points? Why does North Dakota and South Dakota only get three points? What might you guess? Now, you know that it can't be geographic size because Montana's big. It gets three points, whereas... Dela, uh, well, not Delaware, at least. but uh, what? Connecticut's not big at all. Rhode Island's teeny, but it gets more points than Montana. So it can't be a geographic size. What do you think it is? It's population based. These numbers are based on the amount of people that live in a state. More people in your state, the more influence you should have in electing the president. A lot of people live in California, and so they get 55 points. More, a lot of people live in Texas. They have more say in electing the president. Texas is worth 38 points. Let's look at the Texas election in 2012. Mr. Obama received 41% of the vote in Texas. He received 3.5 million votes. Mr. Romney received 57% of the vote, the majority. 4.5 million votes, and Mr. Johnson received 800,000 votes, 1%. The way the Electoral College works on a state-by-state -state basis, we have, obviously he's the winner, we have a winner-take-all system. Winner-take-all system. What does that mean? It means if you get the most votes, Mr. Romney got the most votes, more than him, more than him, he gets all the points. Obama gets zero points. 
Johnson gets zero points. Obama had 3.5 million people said, we want this guy to be president. But the way the system worked, it's winner take all. If you don't get the most, then you get none of them at all. That's the way it is. You want to argue about it? I mean, like what the alternative would be. All right, let's look. Obama gets 41% of the vote. Romney gets 57% of the vote. Johnson gets 1% of the vote. Let's run the math. Let's do the numbers. If we want to get rid of a winner take all, we're not going to do this. This is a hypothetical. If we did it, then we'd say, all right, non-winner take all. Romney based on 57%, you get 22 points. Obama based on 41%, you get 15 points. And 1% you get one point. That is how it would be calculated if you wanted to change the system, but we're not considering that. We're gonna stick with, if you get the most votes in that state, you win that state, that state gives you all of its points. That is the electoral college. There is an electoral college map right in front of you. This is the election of 2012. You can see the states that Mitt Romney won, the red states and the points that he won, and then you can see the blue states are the states that Mr. Obama won, and he gets those points. Now, if we want to look closer, remember, it's winner take all. If you get one more vote than Mitt Romney in California, you get all 55. That's the way it works. You get one more vote. As long as you have the majority, you get all 55. If we look a little bit closer at that map, this winner take all, the, the solid dark color states reveal that that election wasn't very close. So I use California as an example. California wasn't close. Mr. Obama received a lot of the vote in California. But if you look at the states where the color is really light, lightly shaded, those are close elections. Those could have gone either way. But since we have a winner take all system, it doesn't matter. Even if you barely win, you get all the points. Even if Barack Obama just barely squeaked out Florida, it doesn't matter if it's a close game or a blowout. A win's a win, right? At the end of the season, it doesn't matter if you won the game by 30 points. As long as you won by one point, it counts as a win in the standings. That's a way to look at it, right? If we look at all the games at the end of the year, we don't calculate, well, how many points did you have in game one? How many points did you win by in game two? How many points did you win by in game three? Oh, but you lost by a lot of points in game four. That doesn't matter. All we're counting are the wins. It's a winner-take-all system. That is how the Electoral College works. Each state is worth a different amount of points. Where do you think those points come from? Well, we already talked about it. Ohio is worth 18 points, and that is based on the population. Basically, for every 700,000 people, you get one point. And if your state has very few people living in it, then you do not get very many points. It's population-based. What else is population-based? Well, you look at these numbers, you see what Virginia has 13. Hmm, what else? There's, a, there's another number that Virginia has 13. Well, remember, it's population-based. What else is based on our population? The number of representatives that you have in Congress. Every 700,000 people means one electoral vote. Every 700,000 people means one representative in Congress. But if you're counting, you might say, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 11. That's only 11. Where did you get 13? And we throw in the two senators. Every state gets two. That's why we see that everybody has at least three. Why does everybody have at least three? They have two senators and they have one representative. That's how Montana works. That is the system. So if we were to do this, we'd say that they have 36 representatives and they have two senators. That's how that system works. The Electoral College. That's based on population that makes it fair, right? Some states are worth more because they have more people. And if you have more people, you should have more say in electing the president. It is majority rule. What does that mean? The electoral college is majority rule. If you win the majority of points, you will be elected president. There are 538 points total. If we were to tally up all these states, 535 representatives of Congress, plus the three from Washington, DC, that's 538. You need to win the majority of those points available to be elected president. So let's pull out the calculator, punch in 538. So we need a majority. So we divide it by two and we'll get 269. 269 is 50%. 50% or half doesn't win you the election. You need the majority. So 270. We just add one more so you get above 50%. That's where we get the number 270. 270 is half plus one, right? Half is not a majority. Half is half. A majority is more than half. 
So we get that by dividing the 538 by two, and just adding one to it. 270. You can see here's the cutoff line, 270. Mr. Obama got way beyond that in 2008. He won 370 and beat Mr. McCain. You'll notice there's a lot more blue states here than in 2012 when he won. But he got plenty in 2012 as well. He got over that cut line. It doesn't matter. You don't have to win by a lot. You just have to make sure that you get the majority, and that is 270. And one of the problems that we have with this system, states like Texas tend to always vote Republican. They always, the majority of Texas always votes Republican. Same thing with Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota. Almost always they will vote for a Republican president. If you are a Democrat living in this state, why even vote, they say. They say this system's dumb. If you just counted everybody's vote, then my vote will count. This guy argues my vote never counts. I live in a Republican state. It doesn't matter. I can vote for Obama every single time. I can vote Democrat. It doesn't matter. This is a majority Republican state. It's 34 points in this map. It's 38 now. These points are always going to go to the Republican. It doesn't matter. And if you're a Republican living in California, you might say, this is a dumb system. It doesn't matter. The Democrats are always going to win the majority. My vote doesn't matter. Why even vote? I would vote if it was a popular vote. If you just counted everybody's vote, you did a popular vote, then I feel like my vote mattered. But this guy says my vote doesn't matter. Why even vote? That makes sense. That is a legitimate argument. And it is a good reason to say maybe we shouldn't have the Electoral College. Maybe we should get rid of this system because this guy has a legitimate concern. California is probably always going to go Democratic. That means his vote really doesn't matter in this winner take all system. Those 55 points are always going to go that way. Maybe, or maybe it'll change. You'll notice that although these guys are always arguing that, if I compare this map to the map of 2012, states change. North Carolina voted for the Democrat in 2008. In 2016, it voted for the Republican. In 2008, Ohio voted for the Democrat. In 2016, voted for the Republican. It went red. Michigan went red. Wisconsin went red. These are not permanent. There's an argument. Some people believe that in the not so distant future that Texas, which has always been red Republican, this might turn into a Democrat blue state. You never know. And because we're at least thinking about maybe they can change, if maybe they can change, then maybe we shouldn't just get rid of this system all of a sudden. It's worked pretty well for a couple hundred years. Let's entertain the thought that we are going to do the popular vote. All right, let's go back. I'll listen to you crazy yahoos say, all right, you want a popular vote? You just want to say, look, let's just count all the votes because some people say their vote doesn't count because they live in the wrong state. Oh, well, move to another state. All right, well, listen. So let's go back to the system where Al Gore gets the most votes. He should be president. Well, we don't have this system, but let's pretend we do. Let's pretend we have a popular vote. Here's the problem if we start doing a popular vote and getting rid of an electoral college. If you want to be president, you need to get people to vote for you. Most votes win. So if it's most votes win, you need to go to the places that have the most votes. You need to make promises to the people that have the most votes. If Obama wants to win under this system, he needs the most votes. He has to make promises to those people to get those votes. Where is he going to go? He's going to go to the cities, LA. He'll go to Dallas, Texas. He'll go to Chicago, Illinois. He'll go to New York. He'll go to Miami. He'll mainly spend his time in the cities. He will make promises to the cities because that's where all the votes are. If it's just about whoever gets the most votes, it's not electoral college. It's not a state by state winner take all system. It's just get the most votes. He's going to spend his time. He's going to spend his money. He's going to make his promises to the cities and he's going to make laws if he gets elected for the people in the cities, because they are the ones that elected him. What about this part of the country? There aren't anybody to live. There's not a lot of people there. There's not a lot of votes. They will get ignored. If we go with the popular vote, we will get representatives that focus mainly, our president will focus mainly on urban areas and ignore rural America. And we'll get a, citizen, a president that works only for city people. But that's what would happen. If we were to change systems, the rural America would lose its power, would lose its influence. And again, right, we're always talking about limited government. We're talking about checks and balances. We're talking about equality. 
at least with the Electoral College, we have some sort of equality. If we go back to this system, at least we have different states having different power and everybody has a, a little bit of a sway. Minnesota determines who is going to become president. At least Nebraska has a little bit of sway in determining who becomes president. If we get rid of that and we go to a popular vote, then all of the power in our country will go to cities. They will make the laws. They will determine the direction of the country. And this part of the country will be ignored. The rural areas will be ignored. No one will listen to them because there aren't any votes there. He will not make any promises. That's the problem. If we were to switch to a popular vote, we're not going to switch to a popular vote. We're going to stick with the Electoral College.